Uh, welcome everyone to the September seminar introductory section and thank you all for attending. As you know, tomorrow's the session with the MIT Abathon finalists. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it here today. So if you have any questions about that, you'll have to DM him yourself. So let's get started. So at, now, as you all know, the foundation of the Appin Club is building apps that solve problems that help our community. But to do that, we need a strong base. We need to learn proper app building skills and strategies so that you all will find success. You're in luck because we're doing that today. So simply put, by attending this event, you'll get practice in some of the most important parts of building an app, getting an idea and fleshing that idea to make it more practical. And the season of fall is symbolic of change. So this fall, get ready to change yourself from a beginner to an expert. If you don't want to turn on your cameras, that's fine. Let's go for what's going on today, since this is just the introductory section, I'll be doing some app challenges uh, later. I'll explain that in the next slide. But for the timeline, we're going to, uh, after this intro is done, we're going to move on to brainstorming app ideas. We're going to be sharing those app ideas. Uh, I'll like judge your app ideas. It's not really like a contest, but we'll, uh, I like to hear what you guys have in mind for some of these scenarios. And uh, yeah, that's all we're doing today. This brainstorming, sharing, and feedback cycle, uh, there's going to be like three rounds of it. So yeah. So for the app challenges later today, you'll be like coming up with app ideas that will solve scenarios. And in these scenarios, companies are coming to you. People are coming to you uh, with problems and you're going to be designing an app that fixes a the problem they're having. And by design, I mean, just like brainstorming an app idea. Hold on. And tomorrow, you're going to have the opportunity to, he to hear the stories of the MIT app Summer Appathon finalists. And you'll like uh, hear what they did to succeed and what their strategies were to get such a good uh, place in the contest. So remember, the best way to learn is to actively participate. We want your active participation. So that means feel free to ask questions and be attentive during the seminar. And all right, let's start with the app challenges. So so in these app challenges, we're, I'll, there's going to be a prompt on the screen and I'll give you like five minutes to come think up of how to like tackle the problem they're having. So let's start with the first one. So in scenario one, a bicycle co rental company reaches out to you. When their users rent a bike for the day, they either don't know where to return them or they just forget to. So they want you to brainstorm an app that fixes their problem and to like elaborate more on what their problem is and so to give some ideas of how to help fix it. Like, so, you know, in cities, they have like the rentable, they have the bike racks that you can like rent a bike from to use it throughout the day. So maybe what this company is having trouble with is uh, like when users are done using their bike, maybe they just dump them out. They just leave them in some random spot in the street and they don't, uh, they don't return them back to the rack. So you should be coming up with an idea of an app that will mm, like help remind them or like, yeah, or like keep them on track. So I'll give you like five minutes to think of an idea like that and we'll be sharing them in five minutes, you'll be, uh, you don't write your idea in the chat. We'll just, uh, unmute our mics and share one by one our ideas. I think that will be like a lot faster. Well, no, I mean, not a lot faster. It would just be like, uh, I could, we could talk back and forth better. If you don't have a mic, then yeah, you can, uh, just message, but, uh, you should message set. you should set the chat setting to everyone in a meeting so everyone can see what your idea is. All right, heads up, there's two minutes left. And also, did anyone join late and maybe miss out on the introduction? Like uh, where I was talking about what we're doing right now? All right, that's time. So I'll just call uh, in order of people that I see in the participants list. So, uh, okay. So Andrew, do you want to share what you came up with? Uh, okay. So like there could be like an app with some like filter where like, uh, you can see where like the closest bike return station sounds good is and then like maybe one of like lone 
ends or something like that after send the notification to do to like return it. So send out like a push yeah. notification. Okay, sounds good. Did anybody else have a similar idea? So an app that tracks where, I mean, an app that uh, tracks where the nearest bike stations are and sends out a notification when maybe like you're running out of time. All right, uh, sounds good. You want to go next? Okay, how about Eric? Mm, I feel like we could build an app that when first click you like the bicycle bicycle rental company could like when the user rents the bike the bike company gives some um, an id to put in for the app input and once the ID is filled in. The ID tells the app where the bike should be returned and when it should be returned. And then we could just like have provide a button for like a GPS system t- to the return place. Or and to remind users to rent some properly, we could notify them like one hour af- before day is over and they have to give their bike back okay so you talked about using ids to find where and when the bike can be returned now i get like uh when but how do you propose they uh find out where do they maybe take do they maybe uh take the gps location of the bike and then uh find the nearest stations yeah Mm-hmm. Okay, sounds good. Then let's move on to Isaac. Uh, I don't have like any like new ideas that haven't been mentioned before, but I think just like maybe sending an email to a person before like their bike is like due and then also providing the current like closest location to like where they could return their bike. So everybody's ideas so far have been along the lines of uh, using GPS to track the bike and sending out notifications. Does anybody have maybe like a like an idea that's um, like that's not what I described? If you want to share, then just say it in chat and I'll uh, call on you. But uh, next, there's Samuel. Are you there? Uh, yeah. So um. I was thinking that you could somehow install a location sensor on the bikes and also use the location sensor on the user's phone. And then when someone wants to rent a bike, they install the app and connect to their phone to whichever bike they're going to rent out. And if they, and if it senses that the location of the bike and, and the phone is not the same location, it will send a notification to the phone telling them to return the bike. Okay, also sounds good. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, it's scenario two, where a car company is reaching out to you. Their users are always unsure whether they lock their cars or not. I know I have that problem where, like, I'm walking, I walk, like, maybe, like, half a mile. I have to walk half a mile to school every day from where I park. And maybe, like, uh, when I'm almost to the way to school, I'm always, like, shoot, did I forget? I swear. I'm not sure if I heard my car beep or not. So uh, this is a scenario that I thought out. And their cars have sensors that detect whether a car door is locked or not. So they want you to come up with an app to solve their issue. Again, I'll let me set a timer for five minutes. All right, that's five minutes. So because last time uh, there were a lot of people that I picked up, picked on it that didn't respond. How about let's pretty sure there's a like raise hand function, but I'd rather you uh speak up your idea to everybody. Okay, you mean you can go ahead. Yeah, so like okay. most car companies have a companion app, right? So yeah. you can use the companion app and then there's usually location sensors on cars these days. And so when that user's phone is a certain distance away from the car, then it like has a notification and then you have the option to lock it or not. Okay. Uh let's see. So uh, all these ideas are basically saying like generally the same thing, just like a reminder that uses the sensor, that uses the uh, sensors on the car that detects the status of the door to tell the user uh, if their car is locked or not. All right, that sounds good. If anybody has some like idea Mm, if the users check the app, I feel like it would be good if there's an icon saying, oh, your car 
door your car is locked or oh your car is unlocked yeah if they open the app i'm thinking that if it sends you a notification every time the car is unlocked or locked it could probably a, like a little annoying so what i'm thinking is keeps like a log of the status of your car and you can look at that log at any time and i think it should only uh set a notification if you get a certain distance away from the car and it's unlocked really good ideas everyone and let's move on third and final one so for scenario three a refrigeration company asks you to come up with a solution to their problem their users have no idea what in their fridge is about to go bad, leading to lots of wasted food. The fridges themselves have sensors that tell you what food is in the fridge and what its expiration date is. Brainstorm an app that will minimize food waste. So basically, uh, counting, counting, uh, all, I mean, going through every single item in your fridge and looking at when it's about to go bad is a decent use. I mean, it takes up a decent chunk of your time and. And I think uh, what they're asking is, is like come up with an uh, app that lets users check on the map. Like maybe it notifies users what foods are close to going bad. Maybe also it should come up with uh, a way to encourage users to use their food that's about to go bad. So once again, let. All right, that's time. So does anybody want to go first? Um, my wait, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so I thought of having the app telling the user what in the fridge is about to expire the soonest. And then the app and then the uh, app can tell the users like some recipes of what the user can make with the foods that are about to expire. And the okay. app can also tell the user every single food that will expire in a certain time period. The time period can be customized in the app setting by the user. That sounds good. Uh, let's see Andrew's idea. So an app linked to your fridge that has a list of all your foods being able to be sorted by expiration date, alphabet alphabetical number, uh, alphabetical order, uh, whatever. Furthermore, when your food is a day and um, can be changed through settings from expiring, it will send you a notification telling you this food is about to expire. Uh, also, I think it would be really funny if they had built-in uh, recipes for whatever food that's about to expire. All right. Yeah, these ideas are... Uh, wait, hold on. Samuel says the app can have a daily summary of the foods listed by expiration date, and you can integrate an API with the prompt I have in a fridge. What can I make? Yeah, so like using an AI chat bot to like give you recommendations of the foods that are in your recipes based off of like what foods are in your fridge that's yeah that's like the idea i had when i was writing that scenario does anybody have something else that they thought of and wants to share johan said uh an ai that can identify objects and therefore estimate how long it takes for the food to go bad the users enter what date they brought uh food they bought the food and it gives a probability slash prediction regarding what food is about to go bad yeah all right okay well first of all thank you for attending this event i'm pretty sure you get uh xp in the server for attending yeah we're not tomorrow's the lecture today was just the introduction so goodbye thank you for coming here